I'm Paul Levinson, and welcome back to Light On, Light Through, episode 349, my review of the first four episodes of The Last of Us on HBO Max. So, the question is, why would I watch yet another post-apocalyptic series, and the apocalypse caused by some biological agent? I mean, aren't Station Eleven? Why? Not to mention our real COVID-19 pandemic, more than enough? And for that matter, the endless Walking Deads, which the truth is I stopped watching a long while before COVID hit. But the answer to my question is, well, yes, something moved me to watch The Last of Us on HBO and HBO Max. I watched it on HBO Max, and here I am reviewing the first four episodes of the series and telling you I'm going to watch the rest of the episodes of this inaugural season and any other seasons. And of course, there are spoilers ahead. So this new series, based on a game I've never played, doesn't fool around. Joel, one of the lead characters, sees his daughter shot to death in the first attempts of our military to stop the spread of the fungus that turns anyone who's bitten into a violent monster. The Fungus Among Us would be a good title for this overall review. And that terrible scene with Joel's daughter was at the very beginning of the first episode. At the end of the second episode, we see Anna Torv's character apparently killing herself because she was bitten and needs to stop the horde of fungus heads. Now, she's an icon of science fiction, Anna Torv, having burst onto the scene and distinguished herself in French. Well, maybe she's not dead. There's always my principle that if you don't see someone blown to bits, they could still be alive. Or maybe we'll see more of Torv in flashbacks. Meanwhile, Joel, portrayed by Pedro Pascal, who was so good in Narcos, is alive and kicking as he and the spunky, wisecracking young Ellie, played by Bella Ramsey, are maybe heading west. Ellie, at this point, looks to be carrying the cure to this fungus, which so far has resisted all medications and vaccines, so it's far worse than COVID. She has been bitten and so far has not gotten sick or fungus head homicidal, and Joel is beginning to appreciate this. I do have a question about Ellie, though. She said she was, what, 14? But the fungus hit some 10 years ago. So how did she get what seems to be such good knowledge of history and culture, which presumably began crumbling pretty quickly after the fungus took hold? Could a four-year-old have been that precocious? Well, we'll just have to see. Let's get to episode 1.3, a letter-perfect, memorable, beautiful episode in which we see how two people, Bill and Frank, can find deep satisfaction in a lasting relationship that flourishes amidst the fungal ruin. Although Joel and Bella play a significant role, and we did see Anna Torv's Tess back in a flashback, the heart of this episode was Frank and Bill. It could easily have been a standalone movie or even a series. But as it was, it lit up The Last of Us. Bill's a conspiracy theorist survivalist who goes way back before the arrival of the fungus which, by the way, we learned, probably arrived in cereals. Oi! That could make me lose my taste 
for a nice bowl of oatmeal every morning. Frank shows up hungry at Bill's place, not having eaten in two days, not long after the pandemic has struck. Bill, of course, is suspicious, but he cooks Frank a delicious dinner. Rabbit, washed down by Beaujolais, which gives Frank an opening for a line about who knew how well Beaujolais and Rabbit went so well together. Bill and Frank certainly go well together. Great acting, by the way, by Nick Offerman and Murray Bartlett in the roles. And they live out their lives until, well, I don't want to give away everything. I will say that I thought the ending was the best way to go, given what the world around the two was like. The larger lesson of this heartening and heartbreaking story is that who knows how many people really survived the fungal attack. There could be thousands of couples and families in out-of-the-way places around the world, and this in turn means there could be many seasons of this story, which I hope there are. But as to where we are now, Joel and Bella have a car which plays Linda Ronstadt's long, long time as the two drive west. And this was, of course, the song played on the piano and sung earlier by Bill and Frank. It's an incandescent song, which from now on will remind me of Bill and Frank and for a long, long time. Let's get to episode 1.4, which I think of as gun and pun. And I, of course, knew when Ellie took the gun in episode 1.3 that she would use it to save Joel sooner or later. So I wasn't surprised to see that happen in 1.4. I was very glad. It was an excellent, fast-moving episode. Kansas City, on and off the highway, was a good place to situate it. And the coming attractions, say Joel and Ellie, will continue there next week. Their relationship is developing in a realistic way. Joel is in his 50s. He's going to get winded climbing flights of stairs much sooner than will Ellie, who of course has boundless young teenage energy. And Joel is quickly getting to realize that because of that, she's an asset, in addition to her way with a gun, not to mention her sense of humor. And her love of puns in that book. Puns are a perfect punctuation to the life and death action. In between the rounds of gunshots, it was good to hear it get. So quiet, you could hear a pun drop. Sorry. I have to say, as I may have said before, that The Last of Us manages to be a very different kind of biological apocalypse story. I haven't played the game. I'll mention that once again. The Last of Us, I'll also say again, is different from both Y and Station Eleven, not to mention the COVID pandemic in our own off-screen reality, which fortunately wasn't quite an apocalypse, It came way too close, of course, especially in the early days. I'm looking forward to the rest of the episodes in this first season. HBO announced on January 27th that they will definitely be renewing this series for a second season, and I'm looking forward to that, too. I'll definitely be reviewing every forthcoming episode of The Last of Us. Well, I hope you enjoyed that review of the first four episodes of The Last of Us. This certainly won't be the last you'll hear of me. I'll be back here with a review of some more episodes of The Last of Us and who knows what else. In the meantime, stay safe, stay sound, and you know, 
that horrible Russian invasion of Ukraine is coming up on its first year anniversary, and the Russians are threatening to do much more, those Russian fascists. So please do whatever you can to help those brave people of Ukraine fight for the freedom of their country. The Light on Light Through podcast. Athens, 2042 AD. She ripped the paper in half, then ripped the halves, then ripped what was left again into bits and pieces of history that could have been. Sierra Waters had read once that, years ago, it was thought that men made love for the thrill, while women made love for the sense of connection it gave them. Curled up with a good book says, Sierra Waters is sexy as hell. You can find out more about The Plot to Save Socrates by Paul Levinson at theplottosavesocrates.com. Paul Levinson still codes about an ancient biotech war raging on in secret for centuries. 